Welcome back to the Core Cars News Tech Lab. Today we're going to take a look at five pro tips for Roku TV owners. Now, you may already know some of these. My hope though is that this will help either people who are new or maybe even experienced Roku player owners discover something new they may not have known about their Roku um, player out there. Now, all, everything I'm going to show will work on all current models of Roku players with 9.0 OS and higher, which includes the Roku Ultra, Roku Stick, Stick Plus, Express, Premiere, etc. Now, my goal here is, again, to give you some ideas on cool things that I find not a lot of people take advantage of with their Roku players. Now, if you're new here, first do me a big favor. Hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up. It really helps us because it lets YouTube know you enjoy what we're doing here. And hopefully we can help you break free from the high cost of cable TV and still watch what you want, or at least get the most out of your Roku player. So let's kind of dive into it and take a look at five pro tips for Roku player owners. Now, this is the pretty standard Roku player screen. I am demoing this on a Roku TV, which means you can find things like the Roku um, inputs here. Don't worry about that. Everything I'm gonna show you is available on the Roku um, player models I've listed before. The only thing you may know is different other than that is the movie store and TV store. If you buy your Roku player from Walmart, something about their deal doesn't include that. So the first thing I want you to do is go up to settings on the left hand side here and then scroll down to where it says parental controls. I get a lot of questions from people about parental controls. I got a TV with young kids. I want to make sure I know what they they have. And I fully understand that because I have a six year old and especially with things like YouTube, I want to make sure I know what they're watching. The great thing about this is you can set a four digit pin that will prevent anyone from adding new Roku channels or apps as many people call them to your Roku players without you knowing about it. You have to enter the pin twice to make sure you didn't mistype it. Nothing worse than entering a pin and realize, oh, what was that? And thinking you had a different one. But this will prevent you from them from installing it. Now, many uh, apps on the Roku, will, like Netflix, Hulu, and Amazon, do have their own parental controls, which will allow you to limit it and say, hey, on this profile, only allow G or PG and lower content available for my kids. Um, Amazon and different stores here also allow you to set up things like pins. So with the Amazon uh, Prime Video Store where you can buy movies and TV shows or rent them, you can set it up so there's a pin, and I'll put a link to that down below, that prevents them from buying movies and TV shows without your permission. I think most parents have had that nowadays where either on a phone app or a TV app like this, your kids buy something that you didn't realize they did. The great thing about Roku players is you can create pins to help prevent that. And I'll put a link to that down below. So our number one tip is setting up parental controls for parents right there. Now, one thing I get a lot of questions about is captions. Now, Roku will allow you to individually change captions for each channel on there, but you can also set a default caption setting across all Roku players. Um, and there's even some audio guides for people with hard of hearing options here, which is really great. Now, by default, you can have um, your captions set to always on, so no matter what you're doing, the captions will always be available. On and replay for Roku players, which is really cool ability there to, if you hit the replay button on your Roku, um, which jumps back a few seconds to turn the caption on and be like, what did they say? And then if you have a Roku TV, you can set up to be on with mute. So if you mute the TV through your Roku, it will automatically turn it on, which I've, I really like, because I like the ability, to, you know, if somebody's on the phone, hit mute, I can still read what's happening on the TV during that. So there's also the ability here, if you are hard of sight, um, that it does allow you to have an audio guide, which is really cool. So as you move around the guide, it will give you visual prompts, like uh, let you know what you're doing, when you move up, down, over the uh, Netflix or the um, Hulu app, etc. And you can turn that on and off here, which is really great. And uh, honestly, if your Roku ever starts talking to you as you move through the guide, this is where you turn that off, inside the accessibility settings inside your Roku. Um, in your Roku settings here. So really cool option here. You can play with the um, speech rate. You can play with the volume of the guide and more. So you can do things um, um, and even um, set up a quick enable where I believe if you hit the star key five times it automatically turns it on. So it's a pretty cool feature here. Again, all that's located in the settings where you'll find parental controls, accessibility with um, things like the, your, uh, your captions and your guide there. So one of the things I want you to do now is to go into system, which is located inside your settings. And once you're inside systems, go down to something called auto sign out mode. 
A lot of people call this the uh, guest mode. And this is a mode where when you enter it into auto silent mode, it allows people, maybe it's your babysitter, maybe you have people visiting who want to use their Netflix or Amazon passwords, um, but you don't want to have to re-log in when they leave. You enter this mode, it basically is a fresh version of your Roku. They can now log into Netflix or Amazon, and when they leave, you exit the auto um, sign up mode and it wipes everything they did. This is really great for babysitters. This is really great for um, family members who are visiting, maybe a guest room and more. So I would check that out because it's a pretty cool feature there um, that I don't think a lot of people take advantage of. It's a fairly new one. But they didn't really make a lot of noise about. Then the next tip I want to talk about is probably something a lot of people are going to go, Luke, I know about this, but it's the system update. And what I find out for people particularly who have Roku sticks, who power them through the TV, may not be getting full advantage of all the system updates, or Roku also has a way of rolling out system updates and rolling out updates to apps like Hulu, Netflix, and Amazon when you're not using it. Well, if your stick is powered by the Roku TV or by the TV's, excuse me, USB port, when you turn your TV off, the power gets cut to this stick and it may not be able to update. System update is typically in the either the settings or the system, depending on the player, they move it around a little bit. But if you click on this and you click check now, it will not only check for the latest version of the Roku OS software, it will also check to see if your Netflix, Hulu, and Amazon, for example, is currently fully up to date. If not, it will quickly update. It works really fast. Now, if you just leave your Roku alone, if you leave it running overnight, it uses very little amount of power, it will automatically update these in the middle of the night when you're not using it. Say, so, hey, the Roku hasn't been used in a few hours. Check for an update real quick. Yep, let's update Netflix and more. So the other thing here I wanted to show, the last two tips are feature free in my feed. Now on your left hand side of your Roku, there's two tabs. Featured free takes a ton of content from all kinds of Roku channels and sometimes even more. Right now we're in the middle of Roku streaming week, which is a celebration of streaming. They're offering free access to a bunch of seasons of premium content like Big Little Liars from HBO, Billions from Showtime, Ray Donovan from Showtime, Epics, um, Property Brothers, and more. I love this because it gives you an opportunity to say, hey, I'm gonna check out the first season of Ray Donovan. Maybe if I like it, I'll buy a season pass or maybe pick up a month of uh, Showtime to binge, which is pretty cool. Roku does a lot of this kind of stuff. It also gives you access to a ton of premium, uh, free content from premium Roku channels like NBC, um, Fox Now, uh, ABC and more CW's in here too with all kinds of content. So it's really a great place. Plus you've got things like um, Pluto TV bringing you content, the Roku channel. Now this won't be a full collection of everything that's free on a Roku, but it does give you a good idea. What I really like about it, like with the Fox Now app, some of the content's behind a paywall, but there is some free with ads. And this allows you to find that free with ad stuff right here, right off the bat. And it even helps you find premium content like Gravity, the recent hit movie from 2013. It seems hard to believe it's been that long, but it has. And there really is a lot of great content here that I think you would enjoy. So check it out. And again, like uh, the Pluto, here we go. No reservations from Pluto TV, streaming for free, but Pluto TV has so much more out there. So don't think you're gonna find everything here. The feature free section is really about giving you a taste of what's 100% free out there. So you can check it out say, hey, if Pluto TV has this, what else does Pluto TV have that I would enjoy? The other thing I wanted to quickly cover is the My Feed. Now My Feed is a little where you can put in here, um, hey, I'm a big fan of The Simpsons or Family Guy or here, Bob's Burger. I want to see where I can get Bob's Burger. And it will show me, hey, it's included with a um, Hulu subscription, free on Fox Now, or I can buy it from these sources. And it does seem to prefer to show you things like only um, where it is um, installed on your Roku. Very similar to the Roku search, but the great thing about this is it will say, hey, there's a new episode. So if you are somebody who really needs to know when there's a new Bob's Burger, often it will pop up and say new on it, allowing you to get that and know, hey, there's a new one, find out where it's new and go from there. So my feed and feature free are my recommendations there. Well, there you go, five quick tips uh, to how to get the most of your Roku player out there. Now, if you wanna learn more about Roku TVs, I'll put a link to that video down below. If you have a tip for, for a Roku player owner that you may think they should know about, leave us a comment down below. 
I'd love to hear from you. If you're new here, hey, do me a favor again, subscribe, hit that thumbs up. It really does help us a lot because it lets YouTube know you're enjoying what we're doing. Hopefully we can help you break free from the high cost of cable TV and maybe show you something new about your Roku, Fire TV, Apple TV, etc. So hit that subscribe button um, and hit that thumbs up and hopefully we'll help you too. So thanks for watching. Check back tomorrow for our daily news um, recap. Check back every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern for our weekly core cutting Q&A. Thanks for your support. I will see you tomorrow. Take care, everybody.